What's going on everybody? It's a creative fro checking back in for another episode of fire side tech. I hope you enjoyed your week and are ready to learn something new because today I'm going to be diving behind the camera and the computer to show you how to get the film look on your next cinematic edit. If you didn't get a chance to see this past Wednesday, we did a video going over six tips that you can use in order to help you achieve a film look. So if you have yet to see that video, I suggest to pause this video now and then come back to this video after and that way you should be all set to speed. But before we dive into today's video, don't forget to hit the big red subscribe button if you have yet to already and also turn that notification bell on just for fun. So for today's tutorial, what I ended up doing was documenting Carly's first trip to Fabricland and she was just getting some items to get started on a sewing project because she had just recently purchased a sewing machine. So my goal in this video edit was to show the process of going to the store and choosing out the products that she wanted to buy. The first thing we have to do before we start shooting the cinematic edit is make sure our camera settings are all set to go. So what I did when I got in the car is I made sure we were in manual mode. And the reason why we choose manual mode is because we want full control of the camera and we don't want it to be hunting for the focus when we don't want that look in our video. Unless you need that hunting look, this might work, but I suggest using manual because you can pull the focus in yourself. It is a little bit hard sometimes when the action is happening really quick and fast, so I suggest you set your focus point before the action starts happening, so that way when the action comes into the frame, whatever's happening won't be out of focus. 24 frames per second is the cinematic frame rate but for today's video, what I ended up doing, just in case I want to slow down any of this footage in post-production, is I shot in 59.98 frames per second, which is pretty much 60 frames per second. And that's going to give me the ability to slow these clips down. If I were to shoot them in 24 frames per second and went to go slow them down, it would end up looking choppy. So I made sure to choose 60 frames per second in case I want to slow anything down and make it look smooth and natural in the 24 frame per second timeline. Now it's time to move over to the shutter speed. So when choosing a shutter speed and keeping in mind the 180 degree rule, we want to make sure for this scenario, our shutter is at 1 over 120 because I chose 60 frames per second and 60 times 2 is 120. So I made sure to bump that up to 120 and lock the bar down after so it didn't move around while I'm doing the recording because I've had that happen before and my footage ended up looking off. So now I make sure once I have my frame rate selected and shutter speed that I lock in the dial so the shutter speed can't move. Now we just about have all of our camera settings ready to go. The last thing you wanna keep in mind is the picture profile. And for today, I ended up using the cine style picture profile, which is a very flat picture profile for the Canon cameras. And that way, when I go into post-production, I'll be able to pull back all this information just to the way I like it. So when you go to choose your picture profile, make sure it is the flattest picture profile in your camera. So now that we have the camera all set up, it's time to go and get the shots. So all I did was document Carly in the car, walking to Fabric Land, inside Fabric Land, and that was it. So now I have all this footage and it's time to put it into the computer. When I jump inside Final Cut Pro, I need to make sure that this end project is a wide aspect ratio because this is another element when trying to create the film look. I just made sure to change the aspect ratio to custom. That way I could set it up to 1080 by 817. Now, if you don't wanna go through this step and you wanna put it on a 1080 by 1920 timeline, what you can simply do is just add a letterbox effect and put it over an adjustment layer on top of that clip and that way it won't affect the clip itself and you can move it around. And after that letterbox is on the adjustment layer, we have to set the ratio to two by 35 by one. And that way it's gonna have the same effect as if we were to set the aspect ratio to 1080 by 817. So when your project is all fully edited, the last thing you need to do is add some grain to the video. And this is gonna give the video some texture. So what I did here was add an adjustment layer above all of the clips and on that adjustment layer, I added a grain effect made sure that the grain effect was in realistic. And after that, I dropped the opacity down to 50%. Now this is gonna give my project a slight grain and that's really gonna be pleasing to the eye. So there's a rundown of the six tips in action. And now it's time to show you the final product. Start the edit. Yeah. 
And there you have it. Let me know what you think about that cinematic edit down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear the feedback. Please like this video if you did. Comment down below if there's anything else you want to see for Fireside Tech. And share this video if you think it could help somebody. I hope you enjoy your upcoming week and crush it. I can't wait to see you next Sunday back in front of this fire again. It's a creative fro and I'm out. I'm done.